investigation for the Burramund Foundation. Some years ago, I interviewed about 50 survivors of those, the prison at that time, and I set out my conclusions. Firstly, as to the fact that thousands of members of the MEK, they call them, were called before a death committee and directed, once they affirmed their allegiance, they were without any trial, without any defense lawyers, without anything. They were sent by the death committee to a corridor the left, on the left of the so-called court. It wasn't a court at all. And they were taken and hanged. The death committee knew, all members, including Raisi, knew what was happening. They knew they were sending thousands of prisoners to death. And, of course, we, they were implementing, you know, deliberately, knowingly, a fatwa issued by the Supreme Leader. Now, what their, their knowledge, they knew exactly what was happening in that corridor where they directed these poor prisoners. But the question arises, because it's important, this was barbaric, it was uh, the ultimate in brutality, but what was it in law? Because what it was in law makes a difference. It was, of course, a crime. It's been a crime for centuries, you know, to kill prisoners without trial. But uh, the difference is that if it amounts to one particular crime, the crime of genocide, then there is an international convention which binds the countries of the world, including the United States, it was ratified by President Reagan, it binds countries to take action. Now, to punish that genocide. But is it genocide? It's certainly a number of other offenses. It's murder. It's persecution. Uh, it is uh, various offenses under international law was set out in the statute that created the International Criminal Court. But to punish those offences, you need to go through a lot of hoops. You need to get a resolution from the Security Council to send the case to the International Criminal Court. And Russia or China or America actually will... Uh, a prone to veto it. So it's important to see, to analyze whether what happened to those thousands of MEK people was properly and lawfully classed as genocide. Now, in order to be gen to, to amount to genocide, it has to be the killing of a group on the basis of their race and religion, not on the basis of their politics. But there are two reasons for it. Firstly, the practical reason that race and religion are the two factors that most usually ferment hatred, hatred between neighbors, hatred between different classes of people. They're particularly volatile and also Race is something you can't help. Religion, very often, is something you can't help, so that uh, you can't change. And uh, so these are the two factors that we have to see, whether hate, race hatred or religious hatred was the purpose of killing this group of MEK prisoners. Well we have to go back to the fatwa itself to see what the purpose was. And the fatwa issued by Khomeini began in this way. Since the treacherous MEK do not believe in Islam, 
and whatever they say stems from hypocrisy, they have become renegades and since they wage war on God. So this is the reason, the principal reason, waging war on God. Maharu, this is the reason. It goes on and suggests a few political reasons as well. But the MEK, ever since its foundation, was uh, distinguished from Khomeini's group because of their, their more fundamentalist view of Islam. And, uh, of course, the MEK was more liberal. And it's quite clear, as I read this fatwa in translation, that it was a religious reason, was the primary reason why these people were killed. And Khomeini went on. And this was direction that Raisi, of his own will, deliberately was following. It is naive to show mercy to Maharabs, those who wage war on God, the decisiveness of Islam before the enemies of God is among the unquestionable tenets of uh, relig of of the Islamic regime. So, here is a theocracy imposing the death penalty. He goes on, kill them with revolutionary rage and rancor. These enemies of Islam must be most ferocious against infidel. So. I don't think there is any doubt that the order from the Supreme Leader to accept it willingly by Raisi, he didn't have to. Um, Ayatollah Montezeri was uh, begged him to stop, but he and the other members of the death committee continued and of their own will to carry out an order to kill on with, with rage and fervor on for basically the reason of religion, because the religion that the MEK held to was different to that which the theocratic state insisted upon. And I think it's interesting that when the news of these killings first came out to the United Nations, the, uh, there was an attempt by the regime to defend them, and it was an attempt by the then Chief Justice, Ada uh, Lee. And he explained to the UN, he said, we're not a secular state, so blasphemy is not permitted. So he, he said the, um, the, that this was... Uh, a form of punishing blasphemy. And that, of course, is the crime of irreligion or having the wrong religion. So it seems to me that there is very strong evidence that this is genocide. And uh, the Genocide Convention was ratified by Iran in 1956. But... Um, it applies to killing or causing serious mental or physical harm to members of a racial or religious group as such. Now, it wasn't for being members of a racial group. They were all Iranian. It was for being members of a religious group as such, a religious group that did not accept the fundamentalism of the Ayatollah and the theocracy of this theocratic state. And uh, it's viewed as the most heinous of international crimes. It's mass murder by fellow humans, something that they can't control, or the promptings of their conscience. The religious group that the Iranian regime intended to destroy were those who held a different view of Islam. And later, of course, in September, they moved on and killed those who were atheists or communists or left-wingers in 
uh, some form. Other, in other words, those who had renounced Khomeini's uh, view of Islam. And uh, of course, there is the decisions of the courts that if you kill atheists, that amounts to killing on grounds of religion, even though they have none, if that's the reason. So there is no doubt, it seems to me, that there is a case for prosecuting Raisi and the others, including the current Supreme Leader, who was president at the time, for genocide. And that is a crime which engages international responsibility. And uh, something must be done about it, as something was being done by the perpetrators of Srebrenica, which was the last declared genocide in international law. So that is the, I think, uh, arguably the most accurate description of what went on if you look at the actual evidence and decide to classify this as genocide, and then you have an international convention which requires states of the world that have signed up to it, and most states have, to take action against those who perpetrated it, and one of them is the president of Iran.